Now I gotta ride or die So guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have a very exciting car. In my opinion, this is my youth and I had to go and grab this car and get it on the channel as soon as I could. This is a phase two Saxo VTR, but in the two-tone. So as you can see, it's actually silver on silver. And that is a factory thing that they actually came out with in this era of Saxo. And today I wanna to actually take this out and number one, relive my youth because I didn't actually get a chance to own one of these when I was younger. Really, really stupid of me. Should have gone and done it. Everyone else was. And driving them now, you understand how good these cars were back in the day. You drive new cars, you drive fast cars, but nothing ever quite feels like a hot French car from this era. So we will start with a walk round. Actually show you guys this from a 2022 perspective because it cause it might be a while since you've actually seen one of these on the internet if i'm honest i barely see vtrs vcs 106 gti's at all these days so it's always such a treat for me to go and get one now styling wise again looks like a saxo but the vtr of course came with bigger bumpers these side skirts as well uh the side bits just down here with those rear arches as well over you know a 1.1 say of the same era now this one is actually really sorted although it's got a couple of stickers on it the owner is young and he's enjoying his vtr ownership just like everybody should in my opinion you should go and modify these and enjoy them but me as an old man now and in my 30s i'd definitely have one of these and have it completely standard because I'm old now, basically, I'm old. But I will show you a few other things that I absolutely love about these. This is actually still running the factory wheels as well with factory height. When was the last time you saw a VTR with factory height? I know I say that sort of sentence quite a lot, but when was the last time you saw that? You don't get to see relatively standard height and standard wheels on this era of hot hatch these days. Or you also don't get to see all of the panels actually lining up pretty much as they should and all of the arches actually staying on the car. <laughs> this was a, an era where basically all of the arches just decided they didn't want to be on the car anymore. The clips break really, really easily. I know that really well from my 106. My 106 was prone to uh, most of the arches coming off, which was a huge shame. Also, I'm going to point out, and this is an old man thing of me to say, still got the rear wiper on it that's just crazy although it's got six by nines cut in the parcel shelf i understand you know we all live the dream of more sound in our cars but it actually has a rear wiper again i haven't seen a rear wiper on a saxo vts in a very long time sounds silly i know and i sound silly when i'm saying that on the internet but i grew up in a generation where you were lowering these putting different wheels on and taking the uh, rear wiper off straight away but this does have a back box it has tinted lexus rear lights and i will avert your eyes to this sticker scrappage scheme survivor now if you don't know what the scrappage scheme was this was a scheme by the government and basically you could take a car like this that you'd owned for a period of time i think it was a year it had an mot on it but they give you a thousand pounds for it plus a thousand pounds for the car you were actually going to buy something along those lines and it was a few years ago now but it meant that most of these cars especially vtrs were eradicated in that scrappage scheme there's a lot of people out there that thought you know this was at the end of its life and it was time to give it up 106 gtis vts's 205 gtis there is tons and tons of information out there if you want to go have a look at the scrappage scheme but this was actually saved from the scrappage scheme it was bought from basically scrap it was going to be scrapped on the day of purchase and the owner bought it for 100 pounds because there was no collateral against this car for the new car they were actually going to buy so it was saved from this scrappage scheme and saved from the scrapyard which is an absolutely lovely thing to hear i love that this little hot hatch from this generation was saved in that scheme now i will show you guys inside again there is some tasteful modifications on this car and you'll see a few inside but mainly there is standard door cards standard seats these uh these seats on this generation of vtr are so funny they've got like little dots and triangles and little bits and bobs like that again 
a couple of modifications JVC head unit very of era and a couple of painted bits inside but other than that completely standard inside which is such a cool thing and it only has an induction kit on the front of it as well so performance wise sounds a little bit better than the factory but it's still pretty it's still relatively standard considering how this has been saved from the scrapyard and now has been driven around in 2022 by a 21 year old. But we will get on and go and enjoy this thing. So what it's like to drive now, again, I have owned a VTS, a 106 GTI, so I know how these sorts of things drive, but I drive a lot of things in between, owning an M4, owning an RS3, driving pretty much every hot hatch out there, especially new stuff. How does this stack up these days to what those cars are like now? So the drive of a two-tone silver saxo vtr a car in my youth i used to see so much of but as i've harped on about in this video just don't get to see him anymore and it's funny after having a vts and enjoying that having a 106 gti building it for the channel the vtr still has this soft spot in my heart and i'm not sure why maybe it's because way back when couldn't afford one way back when it wasn't something that i actually not necessarily aspired to have but i just didn't take the time to actually go and buy one of these i don't know why i didn't buy one of these when i was younger it's so stupid the silliest thing is i wanted the two-tone i don't know why but i just wanted the two-tone i love the two-tone silver and coming from my 106 gti i remember that car very well we sold it you know over a year ago now i daily drove it for a while blip down on this is so good just little blips and stuff from the throttle it, you don't get that and i'm gonna say this now you don't get this experience in a new car and you never will you will never get the understanding of a little saxo with a bit of power now i know this isn't the vts it isn't the uh 16 valve fast fast version but this 8 valve is fine it revs really nicely and i feel like it has a different different style it gives the power a different way it gives power <laughs> it's actually genuinely sprightly and <laughs> biggest smile on my face because this is my youth this was when cars were cars in my opinion i've driven a lot of hot hatches i've owned a lot of hot hatches nothing feels like a little well sorted Peugeot, Saxo from this generation that you're able to blip down. A lot of people won't understand that with, you know, flappy paddles and stuff these days because everything does it for you. You won't get the experience of blipping down the throttle, grabbing what is a pretty long gear lever actually, just down here, but you've got a low centre console. Right round to 6.3 absolutely fantastic again the the smile on my face says it all what a little machine and i will forever grab one of these cars when i get the opportunity because it is a dying breed this one and it says it on the back and i pointed it out in the walk round was actually saved from the scrappage scheme and this was going to be part of that it was going to be scrapped and uh yeah the owner actually saved it bearing in mind though he paid 100 pounds for this 100 pounds for a two-tone saxo vtr again i'm gonna say it maybe it's just me and i'm i'm uh you know talking to people that maybe don't get it but this was cool this was really cool this car two-tone little eight valve up front lightweight power's right no lag or anything like that naturally aspirated the gearbox feels nice and tight actually on this one it feels really tight not sloppy like my 106 gti and my vts in theory felt a little bit sloppier than this actually this feels a lot tighter brakes are really nice you're able to blip down through the gears it just is really direct on the uh steering as well actually i forgot because i drive a lot of new hot hatches and newer cars these days unfortunately you don't sometimes get to appreciate just a light front-ended front-wheel drive hot hatch it's exactly what this is because now we live in an era where cars are you know power steering electric power steering, electric this piping sounds from the engine like just silliness like that 
it actually takes you so far away from what driving really is. And if you jump in a Saxo VTR, VTS, 106 GTI right now, like in 2022, and then drive one of the newer hot hatches, yes, stuff is a lot more safer than these cars ever were, but it will never feel this good. And it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm driving something that's dying, a dying breed of car, dying breed of naturally aspirated manual light French goodness and it's, it's dying and that's such a shame and I'm so glad the owner had bought this one it was two years ago just you know pre-covid he bought this sat around for a bit got it on the road and yeah what a cool daily driver for a young kid to have this is you know especially this uh, era of car you know we, we live in an era where 300 horsepower is about right this though it's just right it's just right anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you did like today's video please give it a like subscribe to the channel if you haven't we'll see you all in the next one